So today I'm working on a Philips LCD TV. There's the model number. Well this TV came in here dead, as they often do. And one of the first things I noticed when I plugged my AC cord to the power supply is I heard a squeal. I'm going to plug it in so you can hear it. Now you might notice that continued to squeal even after I unplugged it. That's because the reservoir capacitors are slowly discharging into the switching transistor because the TV didn't actually come on. It took, took a while to discharge the uh, capacitors. Anyway, so you heard that squeal. Now I'm used to hearing that with the old cathode ray tube sets and what that generally meant was that there was a, a short somewhere. In this case, what I usually do when I hear that sort of thing, I'll start by unplugging the ribbon cables one at a time and I'll, I'll hook it up again and see if the squeal goes away. And if pulling off my ribbon cables doesn't, doesn't make any difference, then I know that there's some kind of short in the power supply itself. And the reason you're hearing that is because the power supply uh, switching pulses operate at a certain frequency. Generally, it's too fast for you to be able to hear it with your ear. But when it senses a short, it slows down the duty cycle of the pulses coming from this transistor into this transformer to where you can actually hear it. It's actually within the audio range or you wouldn't be able to hear it if it was in its full-on position. And so that's the, the whole point of having a feedback circuit here where it senses as a problem. It tells the transistor to slow down your duty cycle. We don't want to burn anything up here. In a situation like this, when I see that there's a short, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to start checking the diodes on the secondary side of this switching transformer, or what many will call the cold side. And I'll put my meter on diode check, and I'll start looking for shorts. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Oh, did I get lucky the first time? Well, that one's shorted too. And so is that one, and that one. Actually, they're not all shorted. The truth is, um, they're all on the same power rail, so it doesn't matter which one I check, because one of them's bad, they're all going to appear to be shorted. In fact, not only did four of these diodes appear to be shorted, but also four of the capacitors here. And if you want a better explanation of why that would be, think of a simple circuit like this. Here we've got three diodes and a capacitor only one of these diodes is shorted. So because one of the diodes is shorted, it's going to short out the whole power rail. So if I take my meter, for example, and put, keep it on diode check here, it doesn't matter where I measure across here, this whole thing appears to be shorted, even though only this diode right here is actually shorted. In the old days, what we do to find a short like that, we'd start unsoldering one component at a time until our short went away. That was how we'd isolate the problem. Well, that's really kind of a primitive way to, to do it because there are much better ways to do it rather than having to unsolder individual components until you find out which one is bad. And one way is to have a highly sensitive resistance meter. Now, a meter like this isn't capable of measuring the small fractions of an ohm. This thing, I think, will break an ohm into probably 10 divisions something like that. So here, for example, I hook it up here, it says 0.2 of an ohm. And that 0.2 we're looking at is probably just my lead resistance from my meter probes. See, when I short them together, it's 0.2. So this doesn't have high enough resolution. Now, I've got a, a Fluke 87, and it's a nice little meter, but it'll only break an ohm and do about 100 divisions. So I still don't think this is, this is a going to break an ohm into finer enough increments to where I can tell you which of these diodes is shorted. Let me see, on this one you put it on, uh, change the range here, and you hold down this button here. That's supposed to give me greater resolution. So if I move it from this diode, it looks like, oh, I didn't do that right. Got to hold it down. There we go. That's supposed to give me greater resolution. Okay. 0 0.15, 0 0.14, 0 0.13, you can see it kind of moves around a little bit. Now I move on to the bad diode here. Uh, well, yeah, I suppose there's a little bit of difference here. Not a whole lot between the bad one and the good one. Now look at this, almost the same. And it, it, as I move my probes around, it changes a little bit. So we've got 0 0.13, and here's the bad diode here. 
we've got see really not much difference now what what I recently purchased is a a meter that can break an ohm into about a thousand divisions this is something I picked up on eBay for about 50 bucks it's a handy little meter and it's actually an ESR meter but it also measures very low resistances and uh, I don't I don't think it's terribly accurate as far as telling what the actual resistance is when we're talking about a thousandth of an ohm but it still serves a purpose of helping me isolate shorts without having to unsolder components and I'll show you on this particular circuit in fact I can go ahead and hook one wire up here it doesn't matter whether you use your black or red wire on a meter like this now well, you're supposed to calibrate this thing before you start so I'm supposed to hold down short the two probe wires together hold down the zero button and hopefully that'll calibrate it there we go now you'll see when I move across to the different diodes you'll be able to tell which one is shorted without a doubt here for example is a good diode 0 0.043 and then if I move on to this one the bad one 0 0.024 and if I move on to this other diode here, which is good, 0 0.031. So you can so you can see how useful it is to be able to measure a thousandth of an ohm or a few thousandths of an ohm when you're troubleshooting trying to find shorty components. Now there's another technique you can use if you don't have one of these fancy meters, and that's to measure voltage drop across the components when you apply a small current. Now what I've got is a, is a little... Uh, power supply here that I can calibrate it to whatever voltage and current I want well within a certain range of course so if I short my two uh, meter probes coming off this thing okay notice when I short the two wires coming off my power supply together I've got it calibrated so I'm putting out about a quarter of an amp 0.25 of an amp right there now I can change it to whatever current I want with this knob right here but I'll, I'll use about a quarter of an amp or close to it. Don't have to be right on the money. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a voltage to this circuit here. And then I'm going to measure the voltage drop across each component. You'll be able to see which of these components is shorted by me doing this. So I'm going to hook the positive on this side since I know the positive side of the capacitor is here and I wouldn't want to hook it up backwards. Although with such a small current it probably wouldn't matter. But if you're working on a TV you don't want to gamble and stuff like that. So... Uh, Anyway, so what I did here is I, I hooked my quarter amp to this uh, circuit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my meter on the millivolt scale and uh, flip this over here. And I guess I'm supposed to... Yeah, I think we're calibrated there. Let's see. Now you'll notice when I measure across each of these components, you'll get a different reading. Here's 2.72 millivolts. Now when I go to the shorted diode we've got 2.55 or 56 so it's a it's a pretty effective way to find shorted components and and again when we're talking quarter of an amp it's not likely to cause any problems in the circuit especially I've got the voltage down to like 5 volts on this thing this meter is nice it allows you to adjust the voltage and the current all I do is flip the switch here and I can look at my voltage well, right now it shows zero because I've got the thing shorted out. But here we're looking at about 5.1 volts. And uh, when I flip it down to amps, it shows me about a quarter of an amp. I'm just, just slightly over right there. Anyway, so that's, that's another technique you can use to find shorted components rather than unsoldering everything. If you can find the two, power, two uh, connecting points to the power rail, for example, on this board here, uh, I did just that. I'll go ahead and pull this off here. What I did was I just I just soldered a couple of wires onto the back side of the board here where it, where there was a trace going to the positive rail. And I just I just found the capacitor that was shorted, or appeared to be shorted, and I hooked it to the positive side of the trace that goes to the capacitor, where the positive is on the capacitor. And of course the black wire I put on the negative side. And I essentially did the same thing. So, for example, when I give myself access to these wires here, let me set this down in place. I'm going to uh, hook my quarter amp now. And when I, you know, you might try less less current. Actually, I just I figure a quarter and amp is safe enough. 
Maybe you want to try a tenth of an amp, whatever works. Long, just so long as you can see a voltage drop difference between each component. So now we're, we're hooking this up. And the other thing I showed in some of my previous videos, how you can see which component heats up a little bit. That might be risky doing that. I, I think this is, uh, I think it's a good idea to turn the current way down and, and see what, uh, what you can see with the voltage drop. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take my meter here once again. And I'm going to tell you which of these diodes is shorted. Here we got 1.09 millivolt, 1.07, 1.08. Oh, well, it's moving around a little bit. Well, here's the diode I know is shorted right here. 0.65, so that one's obviously got a much greater voltage drop there. Anyway, well, I hope you find these videos helpful. Finding shorts to ground has always been a fun thing. I know they have some meters that are dedicated to this sort of thing. For example, the Leak Seeker is a real popular one. I think it's about 250 bucks. I'd like to own one, but because it's not something I have to have, I'm just going to go without. There's another one called the Tone Ohm, and somebody mentioned one called a Short Sniffer. Those are dedicated to helping you isolate shorts to ground that uh, are hard to find with a conventional volt ohm meter. All right, that's it. I talked enough. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you like it, please give me a thumbs up.